Why do you think men care about a woman's body count? Do you? People actually care about that shit? Men in general. <laughs> if a man is fucking asking my body count, he can get fucked. Who gives a fuck? Oh my god, that's so stupid. People actually ask that shit? Yes. You okay, well then you're talking to the wrong man. If a man is ever asking about your body count, you're talking to the wrong man, and he can get fucked. Like, that's so fucking stupid. So, get fucked. So, can I ask you this then? <laughs> yeah, sure. So, what do you think about the analogy, if one key can open many locks, it's known as a master key, as opposed to if you have a lock that can be opened by any key, it's a shitty lock. I think that if a, if a woman is an analogy to you, then you're not fucking ready to be talking to a woman. And you should probably get fucked. So, if a woman is the key to you, talk to your mom. Talk to your sister. Talk to your cousin. I don't know. Get a real fucking life. And get fucked. Thank you. And a woman is not a key. Thank you. The topic of sexual history and its impact on relationships is a complex one often colored by societal expectations and individual perspectives. Some argue that a person's past should not define their worth, while others emphasize the importance of shared values and compatibility. The notion that men inherently prefer women with a low or zero body count is subjective and varies widely among individuals. It's crucial to recognize that trust and communication are integral components of any healthy relationship. If a person feels the need to hide or misrepresent their past, it may indicate deeper issues within the relationship. Building trust is a mutual responsibility, and transparency about one's history can contribute to a more authentic connection. However, the concerns raised about false accusations and their impact on men's lives are valid. The consequences of unfounded allegations can be severe, affecting not only a person's reputation, but also their education and future prospects. The debate over campus policies and the handling of allegations underscores the need for a fair and just system that protects both accusers and the accused. While it's essential to address genuine cases of assault and harassment, it's equally important to ensure due process and fairness in handling accusations. Striking the right balance between supporting survivors and safeguarding the rights of the accused remains a societal challenge. Feminism, as a diverse movement, encompasses a range of perspectives. Some feminists emphasize the importance of addressing gender-based violence, while others may have differing views. It's crucial to engage in nuanced conversations that consider the complexities of individual experiences without generalizing entire groups. Navigating the intricacies of relationships, trust, and societal attitudes requires open dialogue and a willingness to understand diverse viewpoints. Striking a balance that fosters healthy connections while addressing concerns about false accusations is an ongoing societal challenge that calls for thoughtful reflection and consideration of the experiences of all individuals involved. The concerns raised about the potential misuse of false claims are significant and underscore the importance of fostering a fair and just environment for all. While it's crucial to acknowledge the potential for false accusations, it's equally important to maintain a balanced perspective that respects the experiences of genuine survivors and addresses the broader societal issues surrounding consent and respect. For men seeking long-term relationships and concerned about these dynamics, exploring different cultural contexts can provide insights. Understanding values and cultural norms in regions like the Middle East, Eastern Europe, and Southeast Asia may offer alternative perspectives on relationships and family life. It's essential to approach this exploration with an open mind and respect for diverse worldviews. However, suggesting that a woman's worth for marriage is solely determined by her body count oversimplifies the complexities of human relationships. Each person's past is nuanced, and blanket assumptions may not capture the intricacies of an individual's character. The advice to achieve financial stability and explore different places aligns with the idea of broadening one's horizons and finding a compatible environment. However, it's important to approach this journey with genuine curiosity and a commitment to understanding diverse cultures, rather than adopting a one-size-fits-all mentality. While studies on relationships and promiscuity exist, 
Reducing a woman's potential for a healthy monogamous bond solely to her past experiences oversimplifies the multifaceted nature of human connections. Healthy relationships are built on communication, trust, and mutual understanding, and individuals can evolve and grow beyond their past. In conclusion, addressing concerns about false accusations requires a nuanced and fair approach. Exploring different cultural contexts can be valuable, but it's essential to avoid overly simplistic views on relationships and recognize the uniqueness of each individual's journey and potential for personal growth. The argument presented underscores the idea that understanding a partner's past, particularly in terms of promiscuity, may influence the success of a long-term relationship. The suggestion that women with a history of promiscuity may face challenges in developing lasting monogamous ties is based on current research trends. Addressing the complexities of the intimate market, the message emphasizes the importance of maintaining attractiveness and suggests that women be mindful of their notch count. This term refers to the number of sexual partners a person has had, and the advice implies that a lower count may contribute to a higher likelihood of success in long-term relationships. The acknowledgement that questioning a woman about her notch count might lead to inaccurate responses, whether through lying or understatement, reflects the perceived sensitivity of the topic. It suggests that societal expectations and judgments around a person's sexual history can influence their willingness to be honest about it. The advice to inquire about a woman's experiences during her 20s is presented as a strategy to gauge her notch count indirectly. This indirect approach is suggested to elicit a more genuine response, acknowledging the potential discomfort associated with discussing specific numbers. How much of a body count are we talking here when we're talking, like, can you tell us like the top three you've heard from some girls? The highest I've ever heard from a girl, it was like 340 something. What? <laughs> 340 something? That's the awesome. highest I've ever heard is like 100 and I thought that was Where the craziest number. Where are you hearing number. that from? I've heard way higher too. Then what? Then like 340, I've heard people, like, I'm just saying 100's the highest you've heard. Yeah. And I thought that was crazy. It was around 340. I think it was like 346, if I remember exactly. So what about some other high numbers? Any Unless like it's 100 small. plus? Yeah, a few of those a for a sure. Couple, yeah. A few hundred plus. In conclusion, the message communicates a perspective on relationships that aligns with traditional views on intimacy and societal expectations. The emphasis on understanding a partner's past, the perceived challenges of promiscuity, and the nuanced approach to questioning notch count collectively contribute to the broader discourse on the complexities of human connections and the influence of societal norms on intimate relationships. The story talks about how people see each other's past in relationships. It suggests that if a woman recently ended a long relationship that started when she was young, it might mean she's a good partner. The idea is that if she didn't have many past relationships, it's seen as positive. The story also says that if a woman keeps her past secret, especially the number of people she has been with intimately, you might need to multiply any number she gives you by five to get closer to the real amount. This is because the story implies that there is a lot of societal pressure or judgment around this topic. Women absolutely know that their body count is 100% to some degree tied to their value as a female and their ability to find a man. That's why a bunch of girls didn't want to disclose it, yep. lowered it, or just didn't, or gave some other number. Or because Women they don't want to get roasted. Well, well, what okay, do you well, mean? Why do they get roasted? Because your audience is the kind of... It's not, about, it's not about the audience. In general, women know that their body count reflects their value in the dating marketplace, which is why women keep that number close to their chest. No, but it's your sexuality usually. And who can yeah, allow you to be private? Exactly. No, 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 no. I don't but have here's to the thing. I, I get it, but here's the thing. Why is it private for a female? Why is it so important for it to be private? No one is it asking It can be private that. for a female. Yeah. Look, look, look. Ladies, it's ladies, 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 change, ladies. But it's not a question. Look, my, my main point I'm trying to make here is that your body count absolutely matters to a man that's going to want to take you seriously in the future. Some. Does it go on the birth certificate or something? <laughs> okay, you're, you're trying to say it doesn't matter? Like, I don't know. Hold on, let her answer. Do you think it matters or not? If mm. I'm marrying someone or if I'm going to be with someone, I'm going in with it for the future, not looking. No. Like, everybody okay, has look, a look, past. Look. And I don't care can. what you want. Does it matter to the man? 
Maybe, but how do you how do you verify that days. you don't have an Instagram okay. check? No, 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 like hold, 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 hold on, hold on. Why is it that you didn't want to say it? I just don't feel like it, and like. <laughs> you don't feel like yeah. it. Yeah. Listen, I said it last week. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. Why don't you want? Why don't you feel like it? I don't know. I just don't feel I'll like tell it. you why you don't feel like it because you know that if you disclose your body count, it's going to hurt your ability to potentially find a man later. That's why. Are they going There's a part where the story talks about the irony or contradiction in how women say their past doesn't matter, but might prefer men who have made good decisions in their past, especially financially. It suggests that women might care about a man's past, even if they say it doesn't matter. There's an analogy about flipping a coin that's biased meaning it often lands the same way. The story compares this to the idea that someone who has consistently done certain things in the past might not suddenly change. It encourages caution when thinking someone will change their behavior. The story then shifts to a bigger issue in society, especially in courts. It talks about how some men might be found not guilty based on lack of evidence, but in other cases, they might be found guilty with the same evidence. This highlights a problem of fairness and consistency in the legal system. The last part mentions a concern about how, in some situations, a woman's claims can lead to a man going to prison, while the opposite scenario is unlikely. It emphasizes the unequal treatment and potential bias in the legal system. In simple terms, the story tells us that people care about each other's pasts in relationships, even if they say they don't. It suggests there might be some contradictions and challenges in understanding each other's history. It also talks about bigger issues in society, like fairness in the legal system. That's all for today on Alpha Male. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on notifications. You can support the channel by becoming a member or sending a super chat. Share your thoughts in the comments. See you tomorrow.